Thank you so much. Uh, Roger, did you want to introduce yourself real quick and then um, I'll let you start? Okay, yes, I'm Roger Olson. I'm a psychologist here at St. Luke's in Boise, Idaho, and excited to join uh, Dr. Joy Jansen here. And so uh, we're going to talk about attachment and how it relates to um, teaching in the classroom. And so we're looking forward to this. And so um, the first, you can go to the next slide. Um, let's see here. Yeah, Joe, I think you were going to introduce this. Yeah. So for every um, professional learning that we've been doing through ECHO for the K-12 behavioral health, we've started with this slide from the very beginning as it gives a snapshot of what the topics that we've um, talked about or will be talking about. And as you can see, attachment is on this. So it's just a reoccurring slide that we've all used that gives a great summation of the series. Next slide, please. These are our learning objectives um, to learn a basic understanding of attachment styles, which mm -hmm. Dr. Olson will go through to understand how attachment styles present in the classroom, to learn strategies to use in the classroom for different student attachment styles, and then to learn what is earned security and the importance in the classroom. And I really like this uh, quote from William Miniger. It kind of summarizes uh, what we're going to try to talk about today. He says that it's difficult to give children a sense of security unless you have it yourself. If you have it, they catch it from you. So unlike the common cold, this is something that we do want our children to catch from us, this sense of a secure attachment. And you're probably familiar with the attachment research started by John Bowlby, you know, decades ago. And, and uh, you can move to the next slide, please. And this is just a summary of the different attachment styles that we see in that research. There's uh, a secure attachment style that um, is characterized by a positive connection with the parents, a healthy child parent connection. And then there's three insecure attachment styles based on the research that's done with the stranger situation um, setting. And we'll go to the next slide, please. And here's some examples of how these different attachment styles are impacting relationships with children. And in, in this case, um, tradi traditionally, the primary attachment figure is the parent, but also teachers can be attachment figures as well. As secure children tend to protest on separation in this stranger situation setting when the parent leaves the room, these uh, toddlers protest on separation, but when the parent comes back into the room with the child and the researcher, the secure child is pacified and, and calmed down quickly when the parent comes back in, and then they return quickly to exploring the room and playing with toys and things like that. And so they're able to be very flexible in their approach to relationships where they can move toward their caregiver as a secure base and then can move on and explore. The insecure avoidant type is the first insecure type of um, attachment. These children in the research would give little protest on separation when the mother would leave the room. And then when the mother would come back in the room, they would kind of hover nervously nearby, um, but they wouldn't really connect and, and get refueled, so to speak. And then the next form of insecure attachment is this ambivalent, and um, some call it the resistant um, style of insecure attachment. When the um, parent would try to leave the room, they would protest, um, but then when the, the mother came back, these children would not be able to be pacified. And so they would um, kind of have this push-pull dynamic where they'd want to be held, but but they uh, would hit the parent and, you know, different things like that, where it was just not a, a smooth transition. And then the most um, troubled uh, category is the disorganized insecure attachment, where there was no coherent pattern of response. And these children would either freeze or collapse on the ground. They would lean on the wall when their mother would come back in the room, and they just had a very insecure attachment style to their parents. And these insecure attachment styles 
are directly re related to the attachment security or insecurity of their parents. Next slide, please. And so these attachment uh, patterns that are learned in an infant carry on to the adult's relational or to the relational style that these children will have uh, beyond um, their child, their, you know, their infancy, toddlerhood, childhood uh, into adulthood. Next slide, please. And the, the a measure that's used in the attachment research is called the adult attachment interview. And I have an adapted um, version of this I can send out to people if, if they are wanting this at the end of the uh, session. But this research shows that based on this adult attachment interview on how these parents tell their story about their life, um, we're able to predict with about 85% accuracy the attachment style of the child. And what was discovered is this interesting um, category of, and we call it earned security attachment category. Um, next slide, please. And basically what this involves is this idea that even if parents have come from a very traumatic background themselves, if they have come to terms with their story, their life story, which means kind of the good and the bad of what it was like for them to be parented when they were children, if they've come to terms with that and are able to communicate that with a supportive uh, counselor or a friend, they're able to have um, this idea of a secure attachment style so that they can parent in a healthy way and have children that are securely attached. Even if they weren't securely attached as children because of their traumatic background, they can earn that security by coming to terms with their, their story. And this is the idea of a coherent narrative or a story that makes sense. Next slide. Uh, Dan Siegel does a lot of research and on this uh, topic and a lot of writing. He has a new book called The Power of Showing Up. And in that book, he talks, about, it's a good summary of attachment if you're looking for a good book on this. And he talks about the four S's of secure attachment, which children feel safe, they feel seen, they feel soothed, and they feel secure and develop a secure attachment style. And this is especially able to happen um, when the parents in their lives are responsive. Next slide. And so this adult responsiveness means empathy to the child and we're tuned in to the child. Uh, we're able to feel our feelings and have empathy for the child's feelings, but able to deal with our own feelings in a way that we're not overwhelmed by them so that we can um, help contain the child's emotions and help them come to terms with their own stories and their own emotions. Next slide. And the result is with that secure attachment style or that earned security uh, for parents and teachers, we can help kids have this amazing skill of emotion regulation where they can feel secure and playful and they will have this internal working model or this um, mental model, or we also call them filters, where they learn to expect that their needs will be reasonably met. And, and as we provide this nurturing environment, it will soothe the, the daily storms. And this will help protect the child's brain from chronic stress. And, uh, and also they'll have this idea of emotional intelligence, this ability to be flexible and adjust to life stressors in a way that's consistent with a child's goals and values as opposed to letting um, our emotions run the show. And so kind of given that base, now Joy's gonna kind of take us through how some of these strategies and um, factors play um, or come to play in the classroom environment. Thanks, Roger. And a little caveat, Roger talked about the AAI. And when I did the AAI training, um, the AAI can be used for older adolescents, but it, it is not um, an assessment that you can use for children. So when we talk about the student attachment styles, we're not, this isn't about actually saying or 
um, determining an attachment style for the student it are more of characteristics and as they present in the classroom. So we'll talk about these, uh, the, how the, these characteristics of the attachment styles present in the classroom and I'm gonna introduce you to the learning triangle framework. Next slide, please. So as Bowlby says, um, there is perhaps there is no other non-familiar adult that is more significant in a child's life than his or her teacher. And I share this quote because it's extremely important because as um, I'd like to share with the, you know um, our staff when we talk about attachment or and with others is that we carry um, our approach or our attachment styles everywhere we go. This isn't something that we we isolate or we can pull away from ourselves. We present those. So our students, our kids, when they come to us in the educational setting, they're coming to us and they're developing those relation relationships with us through their uh, style of attachment that they have really um, learned from their caregiver, whether that's their, gar you know, their grandparents, their grandmother, their mom, their aunt, uncle. Um, it's a culmination of those individuals that have been really present in their life. Next slide, please. So um, in the slides, there is this um, image. And what is it, it shares with you is the, the different four different attachment styles. And then how does that pre present um, in a school setting? So for that secure student who is positively relates to the teacher and the task, and we'll talk about that relationship in a second, but they have that cognitive, cognitive flexibility. They're a secure student, right? They have self-esteem. Self they know how to work with others in their classroom. The next um, anxious avoidant, these are the students that um, they direct their focus more towards the task and, and, and not the teacher. Um, these are the students that are indifferent. They're basically like, I've got this, I don't need your help. For our students with the anxious ambivalent, these are the kids that a lot of our teachers or people will say, they just seem so needy. I, I, I don't understand. They really focus on the relationship, right? That is what is more important to them in the educational setting. Not so much the task at hand, but the relationship, particularly with their teacher or that adult. And then we have our students that are dis have that disorganized character, those disorganized characteristics. And they are the students, um, and as um, Dr. Olson shared, that these are the students that seem they have no path, right, to what is going on in the educational setting. Um, they have high anxiety. They really can't problem solve. Um, they're very sensitive um, and they have they have difficulty, particularly in unstructured settings. Next slide, please. So let's talk about the learning triangle. Um, this and when I was introduced to this framework and I found this framework um, in research after I went through the AAI training, um, I found very dynamic and, and particularly very important because I think attachment has an incredible place. Um, in working with our students, particularly um, with insecure attachment styles. Next slide, please. And so in this, um, in the learning triangle, it is a dynamic learning process. It is, it is a behavioral process, right? That, that takes in the consideration of the academic or a task, right? Not all tasks in schools are academic, but in the classroom in this particular um, conversation we'll, we'll talk about as an academic. And in, in this triangle right here really shows a secure student. And what that means is that there is a positive correlation relationship between the pupil, the teacher, and the task. And um, Dr. Geddes, who proposed this framework, is actually from the UK, and that's where you um, get the word pupil. So just so there's an understanding, most of us would say student. Next slide, please. So the task is located, it's, it's a transitional space between the teacher and the learning environment to help moderate the experience of the relationship and the teacher. So they're using the task in the learning environment to help shape, to strengthen, 
to create less anxiety between the teacher and the student. So it's help modulating that relationship. Next slide, please. So for the secure student, like we mentioned, like their perspective is I've got this, I feel comfortable, I can ask help, I can self-advocate, I can do all these things. And again, this triangle, the learning tri triangle represents that positive, secure relationship between the teacher, the task, and the pupil. Next slide, please. Sorry, Lindsay. So then we move to the anxious avoidant. And this is the student in looking at its response to the task. The student really thinks is, uh, particularly with the teacher, and you'll see the jagged line um, in the slide, in the triangle, that this is where there is a breakdown um, in the dynamic process. So the pupil feels comfortable with the task. Um, the teacher feels comfortable with the task, but there's this breakdown between that relationship between the pupil and the teacher. So the student really thinks that the teacher doesn't really care about them, right? Um, and they, if there is any kind of, I wouldn't say concern, but sort of attitude, that is directed toward the teacher, um, not so much the task. Um, and that task operates as this place, right, of emotional security for the student. The task is consistent. The task, even though the task will change, this is for the pupil is that's where the pupil finds its security, not in the teacher. The, the pupil doesn't have trust in the teacher, right? And so um, this is sort of when you look at an avoidant student that's saying, leave me alone, I got this, I don't need your help. It's really, well, is there, a, is there a breakdown in the relationship between the pupil and the teacher? Next slide, please. Then you have the anxious ambivalent. And these are our students where they are constantly asking our teachers, um, our paraprofessionals for help. They have extreme anxiety and their fear is really they're not unable to focus on the task, right? There's that breakdown between the pupil and the task as well as the teacher and the task. Because what's happening is, is that all the pupil, all they're doing is focusing on the teacher. That's it. And so this is, you'll see teachers will walk across the room or not even be able to go to the next desk. And the student is like, please don't leave. Or they'll start, you know, they'll start yelling across the room, teacher, teacher, I need your help. Or these are the students like you're, um, they always, if they walk down the hall, they have to be the student right behind the teacher. Um, so, you know, they're, they're the student that um, we are trying to um, provide them security within themselves, right? Because they don't have that. They have a total, they have insecurity. And really in the end, like fear, the fear is the worry, as the uh, student perspective says, I worry that you will forget about me. You know, I need to keep connecting with you because if you don't, if I don't connect with you, um, then I don't exist for you. Next slide, please. And then our disorganized student, and this is the student that there's no focus. They can't focus on the task. It's a total breakdown between in the learning dynamic. And for the student, it's hard to feel safe, so I have to watch for danger and stay control. And we know with these students that they have more focus on their the observations of ar around them, their systems, as we've learned throughout our series. These are the kids that are always alert, right? They really rarely do relax in an educational setting. Um, and they have very low self-esteem, but a lot of times, you know, they are not focused on the task. They're not focused on the teacher. They are focused on making sure that their needs are met within the educational setting. Next slide, please. And so how do we as an educational setting or as a teacher um, respond, right? Or a counselor respond to, to students within these attachment styles? Secure, one of the things I will say, you know, secure, they have it, right? They are comfortable. They have that cognitive flexibility. But the one thing that's really important is we don't forget about them, right? And the reason I say that is because in an in a classroom setting, a lot of times the amount of focus is more on those students that are struggling than the, the students that got it. And so what's really important is that we respond to these students, that we... Um, we 
let them know they are being seen, right? They may not need our help all the time, um, but that we recognize and we see their accomplishments in the classroom. For the ancient avoidance student, right? This is the student where really that task is really important. And one of the strategies um, that to use and I think is important is using that group work, right? Um, and, and using pairs. So where the group is working together, but the teacher is able to sort of um, walk around, provide uh, compliments or comments, um, and it's and it's done indirectly. So all of a sudden, you, the teacher is providing indirect comments to the group, um, and then as time over time, and remember to build trust with anybody is is a process. And so through this, there is that building process through that task with the teacher. The ambivalent. An example, this is um, this is the student where the student presents very needy. Um, what we use are transitional tasks or objects, right? Um, the teacher and the student select something together where it represents the teacher. It's a safety item. And when a transitional, and this we do this in, um, uh, well, we do it um, in increments, right? Um, we start small and move to a larger period of time where the teacher will put the object on the desk or the student can hold it. And the teacher is always like, I will be coming back, right? I see you, I'm here, they make eye contact. And so that student feels secure um, with the teacher leaving them. And then the last one is the disorganized um, attachment style. And this is, I, you know, this is the big one. And I think we're seeing a lot of disorganized characteristics across the state right now with big behavior, whether that's aggressive or internal. Um, and then what's one of them is really important is creating that felt safety um, between within your classroom. Not it's that emotional safety and that physical safety and that intellectual safety and really providing that predictable um, environment. And in, in the Lake Pottery student it, uh, district, when we have students that enter, we focus on helping them create that felt safety, building those relationships before we move them into really strong, I would say that academic rigor. We want to make sure they know what it means to be a student. A lot of these students that sh demonstrate disorganized um, attachment styles do not know how to be a student. So we teach them how to be a student. Next slide. So now um, Roger's gonna talk to you about the significant importance of teacher-student relationships. Okay, yeah, thank you, Joy, excellent. Well, I love that model. And so kind of wrapping things up, uh, obviously it's so important to have this nurturing environment for students so that they can um, develop more um, self-soothing and emotion regulation and, and ultimately hopefully secure attachments. Uh, and so we're trying to, create this environment where the child will trust the teacher, the teacher is in tune with the child, uh, the student is feels free to seek help because they have this expe expectation that there's going to be a consistent and loving, caring environment uh, where they'll be understood and also um, assisted in problem solving. Next slide. And so this, yeah, there you go. Uh, this slide talks about the factors of this positive uh, student-teacher relationship where the teachers are sensitive, empathetic, respectful, well-prepared, and have high expectations for these students, um, as opposed to, you know, just expecting them, oh, they're, you know, you know they're just going to be a disruption to the classroom. You know, we're going to have high expectations for them, but also provide the supports to teach them those skills like Joey was just mentioning. We're gonna be responsive to the students, promote pro-social behavior among students. Um, we discipline with explanation uh, with a, in a positive emotional tone. With, um, we provide attention to difficult relationships and we're, we're self-attuned and attuned to the student. And so the benefits of this secure attachment as um, is described in the Bergen research in 2009 was kids with secure attachment have greater emotion regulation like we've talked about, greater social competence, willingness to face challenges, decrease, decreased ADHD symptomatology and disruptive behavior, and also increased academic achievement. 
Next slide. And one of the factors that can empower parents and teachers is this idea of mindfulness. There's been much research and growing research recently on the benefits of mindfulness with improved um, health responses, immune responses, more resilience to stress for students and teachers and, and parents, increased physical well-being, and even a possibility of this uh, more, uh, a greater likelihood of this finding this earned security uh, for parents, um, improved relationships, uh, improved neuroplasticity and brain functioning. And lastly here, I love this uh, slide, the next slide on the Chinese verb to listen, which is kind of wraps up what we're trying to do is provide this nurturing environment that involves, you know, the ears, the eyes, the heart and undivided attention. It takes a lot to be a teacher and a counselor and, and a care provider and a parent. And so um, as we do self-care and be able to come to terms with our own stories, um, we're going to be able to be more emotionally regulated and then pass that on to our students and children. And next slide, and Joy will wrap us up. So just some key points, the four attachment styles that um, Dr. Olson and myself went over, secure, insecure, avoidant, insecure, ambivalent, and disorganized. Attachment styles are a part of our educational setting. We all bring our attachment styles to the educational setting. So today we just sort of focused on the student, but we also need to remember as you know, teachers and counselors and administrators and so on and so forth, that we all bring our attachment style um, to the educational setting. A class task or activity can be used to moderate the experience between a teacher and student in building the relationship. And attunement and mindfulness are important responding, they were important to responding to build relationships with students. Next slide. And then these are our references. Um, the Power of Showing Up, I know uh, Roger mentioned at the beginning, it is a book that is written for um, actual parents that Dr. Siegel, Dr. Bryson, um, however, it is very, very much um, appropriate for the educational setting. Um, actually, when I, um, as a TBRI practitioner, when I talk and I do presentations on connection, I reference the book and I reference the four um, S's because it's so powerful. Um, and so, and then here are the other uh, books and other references that we used. And that's it. Thank you guys. <laughs>